in this lecture we're going to discuss the solubility of salts now before continuing on with solubility of salts and giving you a brief uh, introduction of which salts are soluble and which are not i'll first uh, briefly explain uh, how salts dissolve when you'll have a very i'll take a very simple example of uh, the normal table salt that you have you have nac you have a container and you've added a spoonful of uh, this salt which is uh, let's say this uh, pile of salt there's water in this this is water and you have a salt the common table salt which is uh, NaCl in our case now um, the two things happening first is if you add salt to water it does not dissolve I mean it does not dissolve on its own so what you do is you you put a stirrer inside and start stirring this entire solution and once and what stirring does is that it provides provides energy and why do we need energy to dissolve salts uh, let us go back and uh, figure out what salts were so all salts were ionic substances and the structure of an ionic substance is that it has a giant ionic lattice and a giant ionic lattice would look like for example in NaCl if we if we study this carefully in NaCl there will be Na plus one ions and those Na plus one ions will be attracting Cl minus one ions and they'll be attracting Cl minus one as many as it possibly can. So you have all these Cl minus one ions being attracted to Na plus one because unlike charges attract. On the other hand, Cl minus one ions will be attracting Na plus one. And this Na plus one will be attracting this Cl minus one. And then there would be another Na plus one which would be attracting this Cl minus one as well as this one. And so this entire structure continues on and on I mean this Cl minus one will be attracting Na plus one that Na plus one will be attracting other Cl minus one ions so you have a giant ionic lattice which is formed and what are these uh, dashes representing they represent uh, electrostatic electrostatic forces which we call ionic bonds electrostatic forces were forces present between oppositely charged uh, substances between positive and negative ions so uh, to dissolve a salt the first thing you need to do is that there would be a crystal and all these NAC, NAs, NA ions and Cl minus 1 ions will be attracted to each other so you would need energy to break all these bonds I mean you would have to break the entire lattice and uh, remember that uh, remember this point that uh, bond breaking is endothermic and if you're not familiar with the term endothermic that would mean uh, that basically means it means that energy is taken in it requires energy which is why NaCl if you put a table uh, a spoonful of NaCl in water it would not dissolve on its own you would need to give it energy and the energy the, the way that you give it energy is you start stirring it with a stirrer or a spoon and when you when you apply that energy all these bonds break and when they break and when they break they form I mean the ions are still in place but they're no longer forming a lattice for example there's Cl minus one floating around in water and there's Na plus one it's floating around in water similarly there's an Na plus one over here so so these bonds the electrostatic forces of attraction which were keeping them in place are no longer there I mean they're still there but you've applied energy and you've forced them to br break apart and they're now they're now present in water and all these water molecules will now come in let's say this uh, circle represents a water molecule a water molecule is one hydrogen one oxygen two hydrogen so let's say the big circle is uh, oxygen and the small circle represents hydrogen so you have all these water molecules coming in and they are sticking around these ions they're surrounding these ions so 
in the next step these water molecules come in they start surrounding all these uh, ions so let's uh, this might be clear enough so remember this we need to apply energy to break the old bonds and once those are broken we then the water molecules come in and they start surrounding the ions which have already been broken so this is how salts dissolve and the, to represent this entire process we have uh, let's take an SEL and let's write an equation representing that always remember whenever a salt dissolves for example if it's NaCl solid and if it dissolves in water we're going to write NaCl aqueous NaCl aqueous basically means that the salt is now in its dissolved state it's already dissolved NaCl solid means that it is not dissolved in water NaCl aqueous because aqu aqua means water NaCl aqueous means it's dissolved in water so uh, we're going to write NaCl aqueous whenever it's dissolved in water and we also know that whenever a salt dissolves in water it breaks up into its ions which are Na plus 1 and Cl minus 1 ions so these ions break apart and they are surrounded by water so they are also soluble in water so it's going to be those ions are going to be aqueous as well let's write another uh, equation for a salt is a dissolving for example there is calcium chloride and we are adding water it's a solid salt right now and we are adding water to it and it dissolves in water if it dissolves in water that would mean that it's the state has changed now so we're going to write aqueous underneath it so it's going to be CaCl2 aqueous and what that basically means is that the salt has broken up into its ions and those ions are now surrounded by water so it's going to be calcium plus 2 and Cl minus 1 ions will be formed but there would be 2 Cl minus 1 in calcium chloride so this is going to be aqueous Now there are some salts which we consider as soluble salts and there are other salts which we consider as insoluble salts. Now uh, one uh, way to identify which salts are soluble is uh, that dissolving them is, in, is, in a, is uh, an exothermic process which means that when you dissolve this salt heat energy is released. On the other hand insoluble salts are, is an endothermic process. When you try and dissolve it, it takes in energy. So you need to you need to stir it a lot, and you need to give it energy. You need to heat it, and only then would that salt dissolve. So these salts, insoluble salts, when when you're trying to dissolve them, they generally take in energy. And when you try and dissolve uh, soluble salts, they generally give off. energy and uh, we've already discussed uh, how salts are soluble so uh, let's go over that once more uh, dissolving a salt is a two-step process and we're talking about ionic substances so the first step is you break the ionic lattice and once ions are formed those ions then form uh, bonds in the next step those ions form bonds with water molecules or in other words those molecules come and start surrounding the ions so breaking uh, the ionic lattice is is endothermic whereas forming new bonds with water molecules when water molecules come and start surrounding the ions that's an exothermic process so uh, and the net reaction the net reaction is if you if you add the two together if you add uh, 1 plus 2 that's the entire process of dissolving a salt if that comes out to be the net uh, energy 
if it is given off which basically means that uh, more uh, given off means that less energy is required to break the ionic lattice and more energy is released when water molecules start surrounding then the overall energy is given off that would mean that the salt is most likely to be very soluble it's going to be very soluble because it does not need energy and on the other hand if the sum of these two steps that comes out to be the net energy uh, in that entire process is taken in then that means uh, that it would require energy in some form for example you need to stir it a lot or you need to you need to heat it a lot so this salt is most likely to be in soluble so for O levels we don't need to go into a lot of detail what you need to understand is that dissolving salts uh, is, is 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 a type of reaction where old bonds are broken the ionic uh, which basically the old bonds uh, when you talk about old bonds those are ionic lattices and new bonds are formed with water molecules because water molecules come and start surrounding the ions so we don't need to go into a lot of detail but just, but you just need to know a slight concept of how salts are dissolved and why some salts are soluble those salts are soluble because they require a lot of energy to dissolve and so you have to give it a lot of energy so they don't dissolve on their own whereas some salts uh, when they dissolve they give off energy when they give off energy then that uh, reaction does not require energy and so it's very easy for them to dissolve so we're going to move on now straight towards the solubility table and we're going to write down which salts are soluble and which are not